So give me a second. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Kicking It With Kim. And today I have my lovely husband, Ray. He's joining me today and we're gonna talk about our entire elopement process. We're gonna give you the top four or five things that you kinda need to keep in mind when planning. Number one. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I was like not ready for that whole. Number one. First thing we wanna talk about. It's probably oh. choosing a location. Cho yeah, yeah, yeah. Choosing a location. This world is big, and there are lots of beautiful places. We chose for us personally Santorini, Greece, because you saying I chose it? You chose it. I got, yeah, I kind of chose it because I have been obsessed for a while with pictures I didn't online. Mind, but you chose it. I, I was actually ha happy to go there because I had never been there. So I never been there either. But in my mind, I knew I belonged there, and I we needed pictures there. <laughs> Because what I saw online, and I was like, it's gonna be late. We need to go. So. But what's the importance of choosing the right place? Oh, the importance of choosing the right place is think about cost, feasibility. If you're going to invite people, if you're not gonna invite people, you know, you can invite people. It doesn't mean they're gonna come. Well, I've actually heard someone talk about that as if invite as many people as you want to come to like Thailand. Most people probably not gonna come to Thailand. So if you want to use it as a tactic to to squash all of the hey who got invited to the wedding who didn't, then if you're gonna have a destination wedding, you can invite whoever you want. And probably no one's gonna be able to come anyway because it's just expensive. So the number one thing is place, right? Yes. Choosing the right place. Choosing a place. Now, if you choose overseas, it comes with its own caveats, cost. Right. Which brings us to number two on the list. Do your research. Once we decided on Santorini, we started researching what it would take to, first of all, get married in Santorini, Greece. And in our research, we saw that there were, there was a lot of talk about whether you were gonna do a symbolic ceremony or whether you're gonna do a civil ceremony. And either way, you needed a planner to execute this. So this is not gonna happen without a planner. There are tons of planning companies and they're all over the island. Some of the companies come specifically during wedding season to work the wedding season. So you may be talking to somebody in the Ukraine, you may be talking to somebody in Yugoslavia, but they actually come to work during the wedding season. Um, but what was important to us is that we wanted somebody who was local to the island of Santorini and knows the ins and outs. No, you know, has a book of, of people that they can refer us to, even if we chose our own. Um, but they kind of handled everything, so I think that's that's critical yeah. if you're going to do a wedding somewhere like uh, Santorini, is to make sure you have someone else who's on the ground. Um, doing all the legwork. Um, for us, once we did the research, we looked at Wedding Wire, we read reviews, we WhatsApped with a few wedding planners, and we decided that, okay, it was time to have a couple of Skype interviews. And once we Skyped with Poema, we knew from then that they were our choice. We love, first of all, that they didn't necessarily do cookie cutter wedding packages. Everything was customized. And that's what we wanted customized. We didn't want to have to decide between, oh, package number one that came with a cake and package number two that didn't come with a cake or didn't only came with 10 photos or whatnot. We wanted to be able to customize our own experience. I think that was important to us. Um, and there are a lot of things that you can customize. Of course, you think about a wedding, there's everything from the food, the location, fireworks, if you're going to have them. And uh, the, the donkey. The don't don't wedding. forget we they kept trying to sell us every wedding planner was like are you gonna get the donkey do you do you want the donkey that's kind of like a run an inside joke for us was um we didn't know what that actually meant but apparently there is a ceremonial donkey that you can get added to your wedding that a lot of people get added to the wedding and they actually dress the uh they dress the donkey up in a ceremonial garb of sorts and um Flowers. Yeah, walk him around. I, I kept thinking if the you know the donkey is something I need, then let me know. If it's not, if it's just for accoutrement, then that's yeah. Um, because things can get kind of expensive. So number three, planning. Woohoo! The fun part. 
so with the planning, when I say there were tons and tons and tons of emails going back and forth between us and Penny from Poena. It was a lot. A, a, too many. Yeah. Enough to kind of make me not want to receive emails. Yeah. From them anymore. But, but I yes. love it. I loved it because all of the emails start off as like, Aliaspra, beautiful Kimberly, we are so excited to inform you. Like, I was reading these emails, like, excited every morning because, first of all, they're seven hours ahead. I would wake up at like 6 a.m. and I'm like, oh my God, we got an email from Poema. And Aliaspra, Kimberly, beautiful bride. Oh, don't you worry about the thing. We have. And I was just like, oh, yes. So excited. Um, and it, the playing process was only, honestly a beautiful experience. I think they made it. I think they made it easier and stress free. And anything that I, you know, they gather that I might have been worried about a concern. Don't worry, Kimberly. They would say, you know, don't worry, Kimberly. Your day is going to be perfect, my beautiful bride. You just relax and leave everything up to us. And I was like, this is like a dream. Who who does this? Poema does it, right? So, oh, and when it came to planning, we went through several iterations of what the day would look like. From choosing colors, um, we invited them to our personal, our couple's Instagram that we created once we decided on Santorini. And that's probably linked here or there on here, but it's at 7-7-2019. And it was just us, Poema, the photographer and cinematographer on that page, but I wanted them to be able to see our personalities, and we also shared a Pinterest page with them as we were planning. And so once we got plans from them with colors and even flowers, choosing his boutonniere, choosing my bouquet, even when it came to choosing my bouquet, we went through several iterations, but they gave us options. And then looked at what was on our Pinterest page to help us navigate this, this entire process. I didn't realize how detailed it was gonna be, but when I say amazing, amazing, and even myself, um, when you think about an island like Santorini, it is a small island. I forget how big or small it is, but some things you, you may think of may not be available. I ordered several things from Etsy and brought them with me because I am a girl that's all about the details. And Ray was like, don't you order another thing from Etsy, but they were here for it. I took pictures, sent it to them. They were like, oh my gosh, Kimberly, this will be a great addition to your you all's day. It worked out. The, all the stuff from Etsy worked out. I think it was, it added to the uh, to the, the wedding experience. After I saw everything that you brought over um, and struggled with carrying it back, I was happy that, uh, that we had that stuff, so. Anything else we want to say about planning? I mean, it's it's a lot. It's a big process. I think um, we're kind of giving you the, the high level kind of tips and, and things that we did for ourselves. But I think everything that you do in a, a destination wedding or elopement is kind of custom. So give yourself the best chance to succeed by hiring the, the best people. Bar none that made the, the difference for us is having somebody like Poema in Santorini, sending us emails back and forth, helping us plan. Mom and B being very you know prescriptive with us on what we what we wanted and how they wanted this thing to flow for us they even went and checked our, our location out for the ceremony um, beforehand so I mean it was it was pretty cool and I think that's that's really the main takeaway is there's a lot of planning there's a lot of decisions that's got to be made we kind of did this in in the eight month time frame um, the last of 2018 until July which is super quick um, for for wedding planning because lots of people have weddings that are playing two years out. I think that's the main takeaway. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. And it was amazing having, you know, as Ray said, eyes and ears on the ground. We picked a hotel based on reviews and pictures that we saw. We wanted to make sure that the location was optimal. They actually went to the hotel, picked out a suite that they thought would be the best for us and best for our ceremony. We were able to have our ceremony on the actual balcony of that hotel. Because you know that usually when you're planning a wedding, you have costs associated with a location, hotel. But being able, to, that thing that it was a small ceremony with just us, we had a balcony that was big enough to accommodate us, a photographer, videographer, and wedding planners. Time for a lip gloss break. Today, I'm gonna try Fenty's Let's see, this one's one of my favorites. I probably wear this most days. Goes on. perfect. Has a great scent, not sticky. Amazing for just every day, even going out. Um, once again, one of my favorites. I don't know if you all can see this, but again, it's Fussy by Fenty. 
Hey guys, time for a little Q&A. So the first question we got, babe, was, was there one coordinator for the entire adventure, multiple countries, tour, etc., or something else? Basically, we only used Poema for the elopement planning part of Santorini, for that one day specifically. Everything else was us. We kind of were the planners for it. So we planned it for us and we planned the part for Santorini by hiring somebody to plan the part for Santorini. So yeah. we, we did all the planning, like the travel, the hotels, lights, um, the photographers and all of that stuff. We kind of stirred the pot with that. Yeah, I mean, Ray and I collaborated basically using a Google spreadsheet and figuring out, we knew we wanted to go to parts of Italy. We knew we also wanted to put in Croatia. So we got together a Google spreadsheet and kind of communicated. I also had to pull up a map, like how would it be easier to travel to those three countries and not be backtracking or whatnot? Yeah, we, we used TripAdvisor. Not trip about the trip travel. What was the trip name? master? Trip master. Trip master to just kind of lay it out. I don't think we used any of their hotels they recommended. Long story short, we had a planner only for the one day in Santorini where we were eloping. But I think we did okay. And I actually enjoyed the process and also getting to know Ray throughout this. I think it displayed and showed a lot of our personality. The next question was, what made you decide to elope with just the two of you versus having a small destination wedding? Huh. We get that question a lot, honestly. And we just realized, I mean, we've both been married before. We're gonna keep it real here. We've both been married before. And things we would have maybe done differently. You realize in a wedding, you spend a lot of the money on a wedding on other people, on the guests. And we wanted to focus on ourselves and have that time together, focusing on each other, um, the intimacy of it all, not having to worry about looking over at parents and siblings and making sure a bridal party and groomsmen, everybody else was taken care of. So we were a tad bit selfish and I think it's okay and I feel like it was the best choice for us. Now, I think the best part for me would be that once the ceremony was over, um, we were on vacation. It was like there was not, you know, we didn't have to see anyone off and make sure so-and-so got, you know, to the airport on time at their hotel. Because let's be honest, when you have family with you, you kind of worry about, you know, their well-being. We didn't have any of that to worry about. We just kind of continued to enjoy ourselves. It was like the best thing I've ever experienced. So, and we also knew that once we got back, maybe, you know, a couple of months, we were going to have a family, an intimate family event to kind of celebrate our nuptials. Absolutely. So we planned that beforehand. Um, we actually kind of went back and forth a little bit about it, whether or not we should do it. But we ended up planning it for Labor Day weekend. And so um, I think we'll have a lot of fun then. So we can have all of our family together and do like a small celebration. Um, I do think that's important. So if you do plan to you know, elope or get married and only have a very, very limited ceremony, you have the option of doing something separate um, at a later date uh, because you control your own wedding. Another key thing that I do want to just kind of remind you of is that we felt like with this sort of trip, we knew we were gonna be bouncing around a lot to three countries, different cities within those countries, and we didn't want anybody tagging along on our honeymoon. We wanted our honeymoon and that entire trip to be just us. Uninterrupted time with just us, and it was perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better experience, a better trip, a better travel partner. The next question is, did it take long to plan? I, I don't know. I don't necessarily know if you can have enough time to plan for something like this. I think you just kind of get into it and and just make it happen. Um, of course, a lot of this uh, on the Santorini side was handled by somebody for us, but um, they have a recipe for getting everything done 
However, that doesn't negate all of the other planning that usually goes along with a wedding, like buying a dress, getting a suit made, um, you know, jewelry, all the stuff that goes along with it, you still have to do that. Um, and so, I don't know if you could ever have enough time to plan. What do you, what do you think? Um, never know. I think, we, I think we made it work, and it was just the right amount of time, honestly. We started talking about it probably in August, this time last year. Mm -hmm. And once we started doing the research, we realized like, oh my God, you know, we need to kind of get a move on this. And that's when we started kind of researching the planners and they have a timeline of certain things and when certain things need to be done based on when you want to have your actual ceremony. So I hope that helps for us to answer the question for us. It took, let's say about eight months of planning and exchanging. Yeah, eight months and exchanging emails, planning, doing the paperwork, making sure we had apple steel stamps, me sending my birth certificate off to get an apple steel stamp from the state in which I was born in, um, us being together on an off day or Ray taking off work so that we can go get documents stamped and that sort of thing. Um, lots and lots and lots of legal documents if you're going to do a wedding. Um, as we already said, you know, if you're going to have a civil ceremony, it can be lots and lots of documents. So. so overall, it took about eight months for us to plan. Yeah. In regards to the planning process, I am a big proponent of staying organized. In order to stay organized, I kept this nifty binder. I mean, this saved my life because we had travel, we had, I mean, files, we had information that Kalima had sent us that I wanted to make sure we had access to when we got on the ground. I didn't know about internet, if we were gonna have access to Google Docs, Google environment, which I later found out they don't even use Google there. So I'm glad I printed everything out, kept everything filed away in this binder. Just as an example, Poema is very organized. This was our run of the show just for the day of. Everything is documented by the time, who's supposed to be where, when, what time the photographer, what time the makeup people will show up. And this gave me honestly peace of mind where I didn't have to worry. I knew what was happening when. They even know what time sunset is gonna occur so that we can have the best photos. Who does that? A couple of things that are very important to a woman, hair and makeup. I personally selected my own vendors. I was very concerned that there were no women of color on the island that did services. And I quickly learned that as a vendor there, you have to be able to do women from all over the world, do their hair, do their makeup, and make them look beautiful. So they are very versatile, and as you can see, it turned out great. I searched high and low for vendors, particularly for makeup and hair, and I found some on my own. Do keep in mind that your wedding planner will probably have a preferred list of vendors. I looked at those vendors as well as I did my own research. That is key. Do not feel like you are forced to go with the preferred vendor list. Keep in mind that there are pros and cons to selecting vendors from the preferred vendor list versus selecting your own vendors. For instance, I selected a hair and makeup artist who was not on the preferred vendor list. They canceled on me a week before. However, the good thing is that they provided someone who was available and who I thought honestly did a much better job than the original person that I selected. We also selected a photographer who was not on the preferred vendor list. She ended up canceling, I mean, mainly because she was pregnant and didn't know about travel, which was understandable. But the photographer that we did go with, I think was a much better fit. So just those are things to keep in mind.